finance and economic developer, George Kumamatanga. Now, behind me, uh, please introduce yourselves. Good morning. I'm Cosmas Mambe, Minister of Finance. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natasha, and I'm coming from the Southern African Parliamentary Support Trust. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rui Mboni Kazuma for Sly Media Productions. Good morning, everyone. Thomas Mayo for Two Secretaries. Good morning. I'm Benzi Chama Ramrada from ZBC News. Good morning, my name is Enio Yota, freelance journalist. Good morning, uh, my name is Valentine Mabonga, and I'm from the editors. Yes, uh, at the back. If you can raise your voice, madam. The mic is not working. Uh, thank you very much. We are just trying to see our journalists if they can be in a better position than they are, if possible. Regulations 
2019 and mechanisms in place for its implementation. So this is the core um, business of the day. However, you are at liberty, uh, Honourable Minister, to share with the House any information that you deem necessary. So over to you, Honourable Minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, Honourable Chair, and I thank members of the committee for allowing us to appear before yourselves this morning to discuss this important issue regarding the currency for Zimbabwe. Uh, the country has been using uh, a, a multi-currency monetary system since 2009, which was largely dominated by the US dollar and the South African rand, at least initially, and then among others currencies with the uh, British pound, the euro, Chinese yuan, and then Botswana dollar. In the early stages, the multi-currency system uh, uh, brought some stability in terms of inflation. However, the multi-currency system chair uh, stifled growth as the country could not utilize monetary uh, instruments to influence economic activity and gradually lost competitiveness uh, compared to major trading partners. The situation was worsened by the recurrent and favorable weather conditions, uh, low commodity prices and high appetite for importing. This resulted in declining foreign currency inflows, liquidity and cash shortages as well as it was confidence challenges. The government in response introduced the bond notes as an export incentive to promote exports and substitute imports. However, the initiatives were not supported by fiscal discipline. The resulting fiscal deficits were financed through treasury bills and recourse to the central bank's overdraft window. The financing of the expanding fiscal deficits combined with the widening trade deficits exerted pressure on the foreign exchange market. This resulted in the resurgence of the power market, whose exchange rate became the anchor of pricing of goods and services in the economy, and, uh, uh, and, and, and resulted in inflation. In view of these economic imbalances, the government in October 2018 introduced the Transitional Stabilization Program, which seeks to address major policy reform uh, areas required for stabilization rebuilding and transitioning the economy to an upper middle income uh, status by 2030, one of the key pillars being currency reform. Government, through uh, two monetary policy statements, uh, one on the 1st of October 2018, Mr. Chen, and, and then on the 20th of February 2019, uh, those two monetary policy statements set the tone for implementing currency reforms necessary for supporting the fiscal uh, consolidation and the growth promotion. In order to reduce the impact of the shocks, the currency reform took a gradual process. It started in the October statement, 2018, which uh, uh, separated the FCA and the RTGS accounts. The purpose was to encourage exports, uh, diaspora remittances, uh, banking of foreign currency, and to eliminate the dilution effect of RTGS balances on nostril. FCAs. This was followed by differential pricing of fuel in January, uh, January 2019 and the final liberalization of the country's foreign currency uh, market uh, through uh, discarding the fixed one to one exchange rate pack between the US dollar and bond note through the 20th of February 2019 monetary policy statement. Concurrently, a new currency called the RTGS dollar made up of electronic balances in, in, in banks and, and uh, mobile uh, platforms, bond notes and coins, was introduced through SI33 of 2019. The intention was to strip the US dollar as a medium of exchange and serve more as a reserve currency. Simultaneously, the RTGS dollar was expected to assume all other functions of a domestic currency. However, since its adoption, the RTGS dollar has suffered uh, some value against the US dollar uh, at a pace of an average of 1% uh, per day. Uh, on February 25, the official interbank rate stood at uh, US dollar, US dollar 2.5 and climbed to 6.28 on June uh, 21, 2019. On the power market, rates climbed uh, from 3.5 to 13 during the same period. 
The devaluation, devaluation has been accompanied by rampant, rampant deflation in RTG, RTGS terms, with many goods and services now being effectively pegged to power market rates. As it may, month on month inflation stood at 12.54%. Uh, uh, this is month on month. Uh, and year on year inflation at 97.85%. At the same time, prices in US dollar term, terms remained flat or even uh, decreased. Further, there were uh, persistent shortages of foreign currency for productive activities, uh, constraining production and investment, as well as promoting speculative tendencies and capital flight. These developments suggested that the monetary arrangements were not sustainable <coughs> and self dollarization was gaining momentum. However, a scenario of formal re dollarization was undesirable for the following reasons. One, fiscal constraints. Redollarization requires the compensation of salaries in the US dollars. Given tight fiscal space, nominal salaries had to be revised downwards to, uh, to socially uh, unacceptable uh, levels. Loss of competitiveness. The US dollar was appreciating against the currencies of Zimbabwe's major trade trading partners, which made Zimbabwean wages and final products too expensive this resulted in trade imbalances, which was harmful to the local industry. Three, liquidity crisis. Given the scarcity of US dollars in the formal market, smooth uh, transacting could not be guaranteed. Loss of monetary instruments. Monetary policy could not effectively manage business cycles and cushion the economy against temporary shocks. And finally, vulnerability to sanctions. Accessibility of US dollars is constrained by restrictive measures affecting uh, 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 transactions with international banks due to uh, sanctions. There was therefore an urgent need, uh, members of the committee, an urgent need for Zimbabwe to introduce its own fully fledged currency and to formally end the multi currency regime through the introduction of SI 142 of 2019, which was further operationalized by the Exchange Control Directive issued by the RRBZ RIU 102 stroke 2019. The directive was issued in terms of Section 25, Paragraph 1 of the Exchange Control Regulation Statutory Instrument 109 of 1996. Let me turn then to the detail of SI uh, 142. Under the new framework, all domestic target transactions are now settled in Zimbabwe dollars. The sole legal tender in Zimbabwe that is uh, represented by bond notes and coins and electronic currency that is the RTGS uh, dollars. This effectively means the use of foreign currency to settle domestic transactions has been removed and the basket of multi currencies that is US dollar, uh, British pounds, Iran, Euro, Botswana, Bula, the Japanese yen, Chinese yuan, Australian dollar, Indian rupee shall only be used to settle international payments or those services exempt from this requirement as the section 3 of statutory instrument 142 of 209. Similarly, the pricing on all domestic goods and services, including the um, displaying of prices in all outlets in Zimbabwe, shall be effected and all displayed in the local unit of account. The operation of North Shore FCS shall remain in place for purposes of receiving offshore funds and to facilitate foreign payments. In cases where local service providers, e.g. transporters, consulting firms, etc., are paid from offshore sources for service rendered locally, such funds shall continue to be deposited into Nostro FCAs. These funds in Nostro FCAs will retain their foreign currency status and shall continue to be utilized for the settlement of international transactions. In cases where the holder of such an account intends to settle uh, domestic transactions, they shall be required to liquidate their foreign currency account balances to the interbank uh, 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 market on a willing seller, willing buyer basis. The foreign currency cash withdrawals by corporates have been restricted. However, on deserving cases such as toll fees, corporates will withdraw cash, uh, cash subject to banks applying the know your customer principles. Known as KYC. 
individuals shall continue to hold US dollars in their nostra series, as well as withdraw cash up to the daily limit of a thousand US dollars, as was previously the case. So nothing changes. The government, through the Arab Z, uh, has assumed all uh, uh, the legacy debts um, arising from the changeover from the one to one exchange rate between RG, TGS, and US dollar, as announced through the Exchange Control Directive RIU uh, 28 of February 2019. All RTGS dollars uh, representing the legacy debt shall be moved from commercial banks to the Arab Z, uh, which will reduce the amount of Zimbabwe dollars in circulation by at least uh, or about $1.2 million. That's strengthening the value of the Zimbabwe dollar. This is further going to be supported by the view of the overnight accommodation window uh, in terms of interest rate, which has now been pegged at 50% uh, per annum. The Reserve Bank shall sell 50% of this foreign exchange realized from surrender requirements to the interbank market uh, to complement letters of credit uh, for importation of essential commodities that include fuel, cooking oil, and wheat. With effect from 25 June 2019, authorized dealers, that is banks and bureau exchanges, are permitted to buy and sell foreign currencies without any limit uh, in terms of the amount and indeed their margins. This has effectively made our foreign market, foreign exchange market rather, freely floating. The payment arrangements and foreign currency retention periods for large scale gold producers uh, shall continue as before, so nothing, nothing, nothing changes here. However, small-scale gold producers uh, with Nostra FCS shall not be subjected to the 30-day retention period. So there's more laxity on, on, on that front. And this is welcome. Tobacco growers are entitled to receive 50% of their sales proceeds in, in US dollars deposited in their Nostra FCS. However, in the event that the tobacco grower intends to meet local obligations, the sale proceeds must be converted to US to, to Zimbabwe dollars rather through the interbank foreign exchange market. Where there is need for tobacco merchants to disperse working capital to uh, contracted uh, farmers, the proceeds shall be deposited into the gross nostro FCA, uh, this is a special account, which can be opened with the bank of their choice. The tobacco farmer shall then liquidate the proceeds from the Nostra FCA account uh, special to meet local obligations. The current uh, uh, courtroom marketing arrangements shall remain the same, nothing changes for the courtroom sector. Investors who purchase dually listed shares on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange shall only sell the shares on the ZSC or an external stock exchange after a vesting period of 90 days from the date of initial purchase. To encourage and facilitate the flow of foreign, of foreign currency, diaspora remittances uh, shall continue to be received in foreign currency. Uh, the recipients shall uh, have the option to receive remittances in cash or sell their remittances uh, on a willing seller, willing buyer basis to uh, bureau exchanges and authorized dealers or deposit into their individual Nostra uh, FCA accounts. Honorable Men and Honor Chair, sir, uh, I thought it might be helpful maybe to go through a sort of typical question and frequently asked questions and answers by the public. I don't know if uh, members of the committee would like to hear this. It will help clarify some of the issues uh, if I may proceed with the permission. You can uh, buy it now. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mona. Uh, so, first question here's a question. Please explain to me what the statutory instrument uh, entails. And our response is as follows. This is a question from the public and from yourselves, I guess. The government was bothered through the Minister of Finance, Economic Development, issued such an instrument 142 2019, which abolished the multi currency system and designated the Zimbabwe dollar as the sole currency for legal tender purposes uh, in the country, with the effect from 24 June 2019. The SI 142 of 2019 specifically entails, especially entails the following. One, the introduction of the Zimbabwe dollar. Two, the abolition of the multi currency system. Three, the designation of bond notes and coins as well as electronic currency as Zimbabwe dollar. 
for the maintenance of domestic nostril foreign currency uh, for, for effect in foreign, foreign payments. Uh, five, the maintenance of import duty of value taxes for luxuries in foreign currency. The policy measures entails the uh, economic agents, it entails that economic agents can only hold foreign currency in nostril accounts and free funds uh, as, as before, but will need to change the foreign currency in local banks and build exchanges uh, into local currency for domestic transactions. Individuals and corporates can, uh, however, make foreign uh, payments using funds in their FCAs. Uh, and please note that again, the withdrawal limit is still $1,000 per day uh, for individuals. So in what currency will prices be accorded in? Here's another question. Since the Zimbabwe dollar is now the sole legal tender, according to the SI instrument and directives, all prices of goods and services sold within Zimbabwe will be quoted in, 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 this, in Zimbabwe dollars, except for airline tickets. We've designated these uh, separately because we're aware that airlines will need a payment in hard currency at the end of the day, they are offering a foreign service, so we've allowed that they court in US dollars and payment be made in US dollars if they wish to receive the US dollars. But otherwise, for everything else, the, the courts should be in Zimbabwe dollars. Here's another question. Will remittances, um, that is money sent by relatives, friends outside Zimbabwe, will they be received in Zimbabwe dollars, or if sent through Western Union or any other money transfer agencies? And the answer is, uh, you can receive your money sent as foreign exchange through Western Union, MoneyGram, and all registered money transfer agencies. The recipients have three options. First, they can receive it in cash. And second, they can sell the cash in a, in a period of change or to a bank on a willing buyer, willing seller basis. Three, three, they can deposit the cash in their individual nostril FCA domestic. Another question, Honorable uh, Chair, is uh, I receive remittances through the FCA. Can I withdraw them in foreign exchange, in foreign currency terms? There are two types of Nostra accounts for individuals. Uh, there is what is called the Nostra FCA and what is called the individual Nostra FCA. Nostra FCA, FCA is one way you have to withdraw the money, is bubble dollars. Uh, but with the individual Nostra FCA, you can withdraw your money as foreign exchange uh, at the discretion of the bank through the know your customer principle. Here's another question. Uh, am I allowed uh, to buy foreign exchange uh, to use in a foreign uh, country? And how many times can one apply within a given period? Yes, you can buy forex on the interbank market to use in a foreign country after providing your bank or bill of exchange with the required travel documentation. The limit of export of cash <coughs> or baggage remains 2,000 US dollars per exit. Another question is, can I send and receive money locally between the FCA accounts? Not anymore. Actually, you can only send and receive money between two FCAs uh, if, if, if the transaction is done before the 24th of June 2019, up to the end of this month. Thereafter, it will not be possible. And here's another question. However, can I uh, withdraw from my US dollar account uh, at my bank? So, hold on, let me read that. How much can I withdraw from my US dollar uh, account at the bank bank? <coughs> That's the question. The current withdrawal limit uh, for individuals remains 1,000 US dollars per day, as I mentioned. Individuals are still able to withdraw their cash from their individual accounts and banks are in line with international best practice expected to apply the know your customer or KYC uh, requirements or principles and the money laundering principles as, as well, anti-money laundering principles as well. Another question and another uh, chair is why has the Reserve Bank increased interest rates to 50% per annum uh, in terms of overnight interest rates? Even though interest rates will remain negative in real terms, which they are, given where inflation is, the increase in the overnight interest rates will likely more make monetary assets more attractive. Hey, this is really in dollars more attractive, offering an interest of 50% relative to alternative assets, which is US dollars in the near term. Um, and 
the attendant uh, increase in borrowing rates uh, will also discourage uh, borrowing for speculative purposes. Uh, question, uh, here's another question. Why have authorities made this Zimbabwe dollar a sole legal tender? This will likely reduce pressure on foreign currency demands, uh, hence reducing the uptick in domestic prices and, and lead to more stable prices domestically. And finally, uh, Chair, how will visitors who do not hold bank accounts locally or eco-cash transact as they may not get cash upon converting their foreign exchange. These are stories and visitors. Visitors are expected to make use of the exchanges and commercial banks to convert their foreign exchange into local currency before making uh, their domestic transactions. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I'll stop here for now and we stand ready to answer any questions and enter into discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Professor, I'm Tuli Ngwe, uh, for such a detailed presentation. And I would also want to thank you very much for preempting some of the questions that could have emanated from this discussion. And um, I also want to thank your support team and also to say if there is anything that they want to come in, at any given time, you are free to do that. Uh, consult with your team will also allow you to do that. And um, Honorable Professor, uh, as we are mandated uh, by our Supreme Constitution as Parliament of Zimbabwe under Section 299, ready to get of paramount importance as a committee to hear from you, Honorable Minister. Unfortunately, you are not um, available to give a ministerial statement in the House. So we thought it was quite prudent for you to address the nation regarding this very important uh, statutory instrument. And um, I will allow honorable members to pose questions of clarity or if they've got any other questions that they want to pose. But before I do that, honorable minister, uh, we've got an issue when it comes to information dissemination, which I think is a lacuna in our process. Because we've got the countryside, the grassroots, mainly because I emanate from one such of a uh, constituency, you find that uh, as soon, uh, soon after the pronouncement, um, where the number of people going down to the grassroots, especially to the countryside, giving false information because of this lacuna that I've talked of. And maybe uh, from the ministry uh, perspective, uh, that gap, there is no one who is filling in that gap. And you find that uh, the social media, with the advent of social media, people were getting, others were saying, we now have a new currency with different features emanating from Norway. And because we didn't have information right to the grassroots. And I, I, I'm a living testimony to that. Um, when, I, when I was in the constituency yesterday, somebody came to me with actual US dollars in rise to say, we are the most trusted person who can keep this, because we heard that the moment you are seen with such money, you are actually prosecuted and you get one is to one. So there are people who are getting people's um, uh, currencies uh, one is to one in the rural areas as we speak. So this is a major concern, especially to the people that we represent, that there is no information pertaining to, to the instrument. This is a noble instrument that you've um, come up with, honorable minister. But now if it lacks a buy-in from the people, if it lacks the information relevant from the stakeholders, then it becomes problematic. So this is the angle that we're coming from, that there is no one, uh, unfortunately, yet to, you were engaged in some other tasks when, when, when you, soon after the pronouncement, so that you're not available to, to give uh, the nation the detailed information. But to some of us who are here, uh, it's, it makes sense, but to, to the grassroots, there is a lot that uh, needs to be done. So I think, Honorable uh, Minister, let me thank you very much for that, and I will not, um, take much of your time, but also to say, as the committee, there are some uh, issues that we are concerned with, not necessarily to, to antagonize your policies, but also to see how we can add value to the policies that will to resonate well with the TSP that you have just stated, and also the Vision 2030 agenda. So the questions and the issues that will come from this deliberation, we are here to seek clarity. So let me make it very clear that we are not in a court of law, we are not, not interrogating you so that we, we, 
we blame you at the end of the day, but we want a holistic approach. So that as a committee, we are all briefed, and as a ministry, you inform us. Uh, so over to you, honorable members, we are free to pose questions. I can see uh, by show of hands, uh, honorable Moyo, then uh, honorable Mavetera, uh, honorable Karatigua, uh, then I'll go to my right side. Thank you. So honorable minister, we can take maybe five, five, five questions at a time, then you respond, and then we have another round of questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I have uh, two questions to ask the Honorable Minister. The first one concerns the issue of realignment of salaries. Now that we have introduced the Zim dollar, are we going to see civil servants getting their, an increment in terms of salaries so that the salaries will be able to be above inflation rate? The second question is similar to what Honorable Mona has asked. The issue of communication, uh, information dissemination. I was in Gogo Chirea, and are you aware, Honorable Minister, that people have left road for those uh, foreign currency dealers? They've gone to the rural areas where people are getting money from um, development partners so that they can buy food. Now they are buying their US dollars because the information is not disseminated very well to the generality of our people in the rural areas. Uh, can you? Uh, what can you comment on uh, whether we are going to disseminate information in the rural areas, perhaps maybe in Shona or deploy teams so that they are not going to lose their, their money um, through those illegal uh, foreign currency? Then the last question What mechanisms have you put in place or interventions to enforce uh, the new so that those who are selling goods? Are going to sell um, in, in, in Zim dollar because there are some shops even today who are still demanding uh, money or selling their goods in US dollars. I went to Kagui when I was uh, servicing my cars on Friday, last Friday, and I noticed people are still selling their you know vehicle parts in US dollars and they are refusing the Zim dollar. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Moyo. Uh, Honorable Maitela. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I have got two questions. Uh, the first one is, um, what mechanisms have you put in place uh, for the intervention? Uh, the Madam Speaker, if you can start again, your mic is off. Oh, all right, thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, my question is, my first question is, um, what mechanisms have you put in place uh, for the interbank uh, uh, rate, um, which has escalated ever since uh, the, the inception of the SIA uh, 142, uh, it has escalated to get to about 8.9 in local banks. Uh, my question is, I know as much as we, uh, there are forces of um, demand and supply that uh, would be put in place, but what is it that should be put in place so that at least uh, we can have, then have probably a controlled rate so that we cannot escalate inflation? especially on the prices. Um, and then the second question that I want to ask is, uh, in view of um, that uh, when we look at school fees, school fees is paid in quarterly periods. Uh, we have got some state institutions in the country uh, who are charging US dollars, especially for, uh, we have got one for doctorate and business leadership, uh, that is at a middle state university. They were charging US dollars. What I wanted to find out now is considering the new uh, SI 142, we've got this uh, that uh, probably were from May, uh, and now people are still paying now. Uh, with effect from 24 June, uh, what is the current position in terms of school fees, uh, especially at state, uh, for, for state institutions? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Maitena. Honorable Thank you, Chair. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, we appreciate uh, the positive, positives that emanate from the liberalization of the rate of exchange. That is uh, uh, the good that comes from the interbank market. However, uh, what this is uh, done is uh, it has posed challenges to recapitalize necessitating borrowing and uh, yes the interest rate now has been pegged at 50% this is uh, 
from the central bank if i uh yet you correct minister which means uh the banks will in turn uh put a premium which means uh they might be actually lending it more than uh 65 percent and uh, i appreciate the fact that this is probably academically derived from the inflationary figures uh but I feel this is uh, punitive, uh, very punitive, and uh, I think we've got two kinds of business people. Punitive might be okay for the bad uh, business people, those who are negating the effects of turning around this economy. But we've also got another chunk of business people. This is the generality of uh, business people with honest business people who are trying to earn a living and surely when you create recapitalization challenges and you expect them to uh, recapitalize their businesses borrowing at well over 60 percent do you honestly think you are going to turn around this economy when you leave behind the business community i think you need to to look at this positively my next question is uh, so currency for legal tender yes but uh, selective administration of that uh, currency i think it poses challenges uh, you gave one example of uh, the airlines they are allowed to ticket uh, to me, that's selective administration uh, of the instrument, and I feel you probably need to revisit there and be able to look at the same treatment that is probably given to uh, fuel procurement, whereby if we are having our own currency, you should be able to say, it's all currency, we buy our tickets in the local currency, and it's up to those A lines or those agencies to visit the central bank or through the interbank system to secure it might be better to give them priority so my question is on uh, selective application of uh, the statutory instrument on, on, on current reforms that's the second person thank you uh, thank you very much uh, honorable karatigwa i will take uh, honorable matsimuri and honorable sansole uh, please, then I'll come to my right for the second segment. I'll come back to you, Honourable Members. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Monarch. Sorry, oh, sorry, Professor. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, two Honourable Members to, so that we have five. Though there are five in the sense, but more than five in the audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. Honourable Members, this question relates to the issue of information dissemination and make people aware of the need to uh, change from our currency to uh, our own uh, currency. Uh, Minister, what could have necessitated you to issue that statement so suddenly without going through the what I expect to be a normal procedure of informing the country uh, so that you avoid all uh, the, the problems that we now have? Um, isn't it another reason why sometimes you don't have a buy-in and also the issue of confidence? On the issue of um, interest rate of 50, effectively what it means is that you are not, it appears as though we are not confident with our own uh, currency. Because if you are confident, 5%, uh, 10% interest rate is the normal interest rate. Does this promote any confidence building such a rate? considering that it will also follow that when we make our own markups, we are looking at something more than probably around 30, 40, 50 percent, which will make the products quite expensive uh, and making it difficult for our ordinary people who are normally government employees to get enough to buy competitively, not to play at all. Um, can you also explain the difference between a FCA and the individual FCA. Uh, you alluded to the fact that there are two FCAs. Uh, the, uh, another one is an individual FCA, another one is just called an FCA. 
uh, and also Minister, recently when you issued your last statement, statement and encouraged the people to open uh, the FCA accounts, uh, people were so confident that they would trade using the FCA accounts and also as a measure of um, preserving the value. Uh, that's what it also now gives people confidence that when you pronounce another statement, people will take it seriously. Consider that it's less than six months you have already changed the policy. While these people were all still rushing to open their FCAs, they are now skeptical. They now don't know whether they will. If they follow what we have said, will it be for a period that is no more in business? Um, on the sorry, we're not going to more. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Over to you, Honorable Minister. 